The 2024 MLB season has been underway for a couple months now, and is finally reaching its halfway mark. With the trade deadline looming, there are always teams that are buyers and teams that are sellers. Buyers are usually teams that have done surprisingly great and are just a couple pieces away from being a championship team. Sellers are the opposite, being a team that was supposed to be good but ended up being horrible and are willing to trade their stars for future assets. Here in this video, I'll break down the teams that are going to be buyers and teams that are going to be sellers this season. The first team I got as a buyer this season are obviously the Cleveland Guardians. The Guardians have been incredible this season, having one of the best records in the MLB this year. Having breakout seasons from outfielder Stephen Kwan and utility David Frost, this team has surprised everybody this year. Even with a lackluster pitching staff, the Guardians have been able to pull this off due to their offense, scoring over 5 runs a game, which is ranked 3rd best in the league. Having this kind of season when you weren't expected to do anything, the Guardians will for sure be buyers in the market. As for what the Guardians will be looking for, they're going to need pitching if they want to contend for a World Series. They're ranked top 10 in ERA, but that's not good enough heading into the postseason, because every team is top 10 in the major category. As for what pitchers specifically the Guardians are going to be looking for, I'd keep my eye on Tyler Anderson of the Angels and Jose Barrios of the Blue Jays. Both pitchers have a sub-3 ERAs, have great stuff, and are on teams that might be looking to retool their roster a little bit. They can also go after one-year rentals with great history like Patrick Corbin or Lance Lynn, hoping to get some more out of those pitchers before they retire. There are a lot of things that the Guardians could do and should do, because with how good their offense has been, they have a good shot at the World Series. The first team that should be sellers at the midseason mark is the Toronto Blue Jays. The Blue Jays had so much potential for a couple years now. Going back to 2021, the Blue Jays had a young core of Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Bo Bichette, and Kevin Biggio that were performing well combined with all-stars Teoscar Hernandez and Marcus Simeon. But after all those years being together, these stars can never get it done, either getting swept in the divisional round or not making it to the playoffs at all. The young core they came in with are free agents in two years. And after a disappointing start to this season, I think it's time to blow it up. There have been a lot of trade rumors around Vlad Jr. and Bo Bichette for the whole season at this point, and I can see the Blue Jays parting ways with at least one of them this year, more specifically Vlad Jr. He provides the needed corner infield help that championship teams need, like the Dodgers at third or the Brewers at first. Both the Dodgers and Brewers have great farm systems that can piece a great deal for a superstar like Vlad Jr., and I think the Brewers are more likely to make this move. The Blue Jays could get a nice haul that could include Jackson Churio if they play their cards right, and could set them on the right path to contending. The Blue Jays need to make a midseason move, and them being sellers is the right move for them going forward. The next team that are going to be buyers at the midseason point are the Kansas City Royals. The Royals have been on a tear this season, being led by young superstar Bobby Witt Jr. Their offense has been great with Bobby and veteran catcher Salvador Perez, but it's their pitching that's taken them from a 106 loss team to where they're at now. Starters like Seth Lugo, Cole Reagan, and Brady Singer have been incredible this season, as well as their relievers Angel Zerpa and John Schreiber. What they need to be buying is helping their outfield. Their outfield hitting has been terrible this year, spreading out MJ Melendez, who's been one of the worst hitters in baseball batting under 200 this season, one of their offseason acquisitions Hunter Renfro, who's batting 201, and Kyle Isbell, who's batting less than 220. There are plenty of outfield one-year rentals that the Royals can take a gamble on, like Michael Conforto from the Giants, Tyler O'Neill from the Red Sox, or Harrison Bader from the Mets. All of these guys are affordable for the Royals, and would give them a better shot at making the World Series this year. Let's hope the Royals can pull off trades that can make their team better for the long term. The second team that should be sellers this season is the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals had a terrible season last year because of their lack of pitching. During the offseason, they added Lance Lynn, Kyle Gibson, and Sonny Gray in hopes to improve their starting rotation, but it's almost identical to last season. It's time to blow up this team and focus on the future. Guys like Paul Goldschmidt, Kyle Gibson, Lance Lynn, and Matt Carpenter are all going to be free agents next summer and are all over the age of 35. So let's get some pieces to get the Cardinals back to the luxurious history they once had. Goldschmidt and Carpenter can help mentor World Series teams and even provide a pinch hitting if teams need it. Gibson and Lynn can give a team who needs starting pitching good innings, or can be relegated to a reliever role, where they don't have to go as many innings and still have a positive impact. I could see Goldschmidt and Carpenter going to young playoff teams like the Orioles or the Mariners, and Gibson and Lynn could go to the Guardians or the Yankees if injuries plague their starting rotation even more. The Cardinals have so much to offer and are not doing well this year, 
So let's build around Mason Wynn and Nolan Gorman and get more pieces for the future. The last team I got is buyers are the controversial New York Mets. I know what you're thinking. The Mets are not a good team this season. Why should they be buyers? It's because they're the New York Mets. The Mets are one of the most expensive teams in the league and they were sellers at last year's midseason points. There's no way owner Steve Cohen makes the Mets sellers two years in a row. With lots of big name players like Pete Alonso, Francisco Lindor, JD Martinez and Jeff McNeil, there are lots of players in the league that want to play in New York. What they need to look for is pitching, both starters and relievers. They could get guys like Robbie Ray, Lucas Giolito, and Kenley Jansen for cheap while keeping the core of their team. And if they can string together a couple of wins, go on a nice win streak, they could be a scary team going into the playoffs. The last team that are going to be sellers is the San Francisco Giants. The Giants made crazy offseason moves. They signed Cy Young winner Blake Snell, Jung Hoo Lee, Matt Chapman, Jorge Soler, Jordan Hicks, the list goes on and on. They tried to establish a new identity there in San Francisco, but it didn't turn out how they thought it would. Jung Hoo Lee hurt his shoulder and is out for the season. Matt Chapman and Jorge Soler have been well under average, and Blake Snell has been super disappointing in his time there, having an ERA above 9 to start the season. The Giants aren't known for being a big money spending team. They do best when they build their team through their prospects. They need to get back to that, and in order to do that, they need to be sellers this season. If the Giants think that Blake Snell and Matt Chapman will want to stay for at least one more year, then I would say keep them on your roster. But it doesn't look like that's happened, so it's best to get something for them now than letting them walk for free. Same thing with Robbie Ray and Michael Conforto, both players being good enough to get some value for them. Trade these guys you signed in free agency and help your young guys like Marco Luciano and Jung Hoo Lee get better for next season, hoping they can have a better start than they did this year. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. All that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.